As you begin to walk with God, you begin to discover. And that's what Peter was doing. So Peter was going to be tasked with a superior view of ministry. Now God was going to discuss heavy matters. It's no longer Peter, come, let me show you how to heal the sick. Peter, now it's your turn. And Jesus was leaving the scene. And I can tell you as a leader, it is harder to build someone that can carry the dream than to build the dream. Because you already know what you want to do, right? So as long as it's you doing, you do it well. The problem comes is when you, you need to call someone else to continue doing what you are doing. Have you not seen mantles hanging and no one to pick them? Have you not realized that? Like if you trace around, you rarely see Bonke, the evangelist. You rarely see him. Why? But when Bonke was alive, he did crusades. You know, I saw the last crusade today that he did. And he prophesied because I know the person that he called. I know. And told him that I want to do my last meeting. How do you know that? And I was watching him and he said, I want to do my last meeting. And so he called someone to help him to do the meeting. And that meeting was so powerful. And he said it. After the meeting, he breathed out. So when Bonke was there, if two million came for the crusade, he knows what to do with them. Now, the problem is to take this same two million and give it to another person. That's why the interview was very needful. Peter, do you love me? Because I'm about to leave and I don't want a vacancy in my, in my space. And the only way that you can feel it is not how much you have, is not where you live, is by love. We only represent, we represent God best when we love. So that was the interview. And I wondered where was John at this time? And where was Matthew? And where was James and Andrew? Where are the sons of Zebedee? Where are all these? He only spoke to Peter. I came to know why. Do you remember the scripture that says, if I professor if i speak in tongues of angels and all those things and have not so what was jesus transmitting to peter love which is the highest form the highest form of demonstrating god is love yes you can be here you are an apostle you are a preacher until god begins to talk to you the language of love you will not know how what it means to reach out because you don't love so for you you want to prove that you are the big one you should not reach out to anyone Everyone should reach out. Those are babes. God will not discuss the language of the kingdom, the depths of the kingdom. Look, the foundation, the depths of the foundation of the kingdom is love. And when God begins to call you, there are ministers of the gospel that don't love people, that don't love God that enough. So there are things about God God cannot tell you because the foundation of that thing is love. And because you have decided you are going to sideline who you want and who you don't want, there are things about God you will never come into because they are only controlled by love. Peter, do you love me? So that was the job. He was looking for a successor. Who will succeed you when you are gone? It's very important to think about. Now, do you realize Jesus is speaking like this at 33? So it means at 33, if you don't know who will succeed you, you have failed. Or number two, you don't have what to be succeeded. I want to repeat my statement very well. At 33, you should have what should succeed you and who should succeed you. Me, I do. That's why I can comfortably make some statements. Like shortly from now, my, my teaching ministry will be, I have, I, 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 I know I have something. Now, there is someone here if I ask you, what can people inherit from you? You are 48, you are 54, and you have nothing you can say. Uh, meanwhile, I hope you know I'm not talking about money. So, I have some, um, I have some two cows. <laughs> have you demonstrated your vision enough that it requires a successor? Can people leave what they think God called them to do 
when they finally meet you and see what God called them to do? Are you the mirror that people can look at and say, what? I have met myself when I listen to you. Do people transform when they meet you on your vision? Can people transform? And that's very vital and important for you to ask. And so number one, you must build a dream that can be succeeded. Number two, number two, you must have a successor. Jesus was talking about his succession plan was at 33 years. So if you are here and you are 33 years and above, and you have nothing for people to inherit, one, and number two, you don't have anyone to inherit you. If you die, you are a failure because you are, you are a reason why people in the future cannot find God well. Why do you think God calls Moses and tell him to document? I was telling you the other day about data keeping. God believes in data. Record keeping. The Ten Commandments. He wrote them. Otherwise, he could have told Moses, Moses, remember. Is that not true? Why write it? And then either way, after writing, then he still comes and he says, I will still write. It's still a writing, but I'll write it in your heart. It's still a writing. It's so that those that come after you teach these things to your children. Is that the Bible? And to your children and their children. Because God is in that business. So if you don't have anything to be succeeded, some of you have purpose to just fail. You have just decided, me, I'm just, I want to fail. And that's why sometimes I tell you to look at me. I had no advantage. My family can tell you. No advantage. My father never left me a property to do church. He never left me resources. No advantage. So I expect you to hear me when I'm teaching. Because I had no advantage. So I've not gotten where I've gotten because I had a rich parent. No advantage. So you have no reason to fail because the one talking to you did it. You have no reason. In fact, if you are listening to me online, I know there are thousands of people that watch across the world or here, and you fail, you're on your own. You will need to answer, why did you fail? Because there was an, a map in front of you. You know why God gives you a pastor? Most of the time you notice your father will fail. So God gives you a pastor, a shepherd, to keep you in the ways of the Lord. Don't discredit a shepherd. Because a shepherd is a replacement of a father. I'm doing what your father could have done. If your father did a good job, I would not be here preaching. I hope you know that. So we take jobs that we, for example, imagine you with your beards and you're calling me dad. Why? You know sometimes when people call me that, I'm like, don't stop doing that. Just call me John. I feel so sad because I feel like I'm nothing. I'm just a toilet cleaner. But by the time a man, women is okay because emotions are attached. So, but men is different. When a man comes and calls you, like I hear some people calling me dad and father. I'm thinking, this guy knows who is a father. What has he seen in me for him to call me a father? There has to be a, a, something, and a man can only call a person a father if he sees where he's going in him. Do you understand that? You have no reason to fail. So some of you have had bad parents. No wonder God brings you to great preachers. So you have no reason. So stop looking at your bad parent. Honor your bad parent. They are still your parent. But thank God for where they took you to. You don't stop there. Your future is inside of you. You reveal it. You keep hearing the word of God and refuse any barriers. Oh, Bishop, you don't understand. I failed school. Some of us were not even in school. At least you, you failed. And I'm not saying me. At least you, you, you have an elephant. <laughs> At least you have an elephant. There are people here that have never even known it's an animal. Eh. But let me ask you a question. That didn't stop them. They still pushed on through. If you look for reasons to fail, you will find more than enough. If you want to fail now, if you have decided you are going to fail, you are going to, every reason that you are going to see will be custom, custom made for failure. Because that's all you have seen. So 
That's the way life is. People come to my office and bring issues, and I look at them. Me, I'm already seeing the solution. Sometimes I wonder, can't you see it? It's so plain. But in my mind, you know what's the difference? I have already purpose that in every situation I'm more than a conqueror. That's the scripture. So no situation will conquer me. I have already, my, the state of my mind is that I am more than, the Bible says it, in all this, we are more than. So that's my status. So it doesn't matter, it doesn't mean situations will not come. Then how will you write your story of conquering? You are conquering, you, you are fighting battles. You, there are no even battles, but you have already crowned yourself. What wars have you fought? No reason to fail. 